So, whether or not you realize that sometimes you are telling me the robot. Like the, most of the website nowadays use a chatbot okay, for customer, the service. It's not real person, so you are talking to the, the chatbot. So also, most of the uh, cloud computing, they provide the uh, library to develop the easily the chatbot. Okay? If you train the something, you can easily develop the, your own chatbot. You, if you don't want to talk to the real person, so you can make your own avatar. Uh, by applying the, so that is the Turing test, but the, he was not the brother of the uh, artificial intelligence. Actually, the artificial intelligence was uh, first time introduced in 1960. It is almost 60 years ago by the John McCarthy. So John McCarthy was uh, a professor in Stanford. So when he uh, attended a workshop at the, I think the nearby uh, what's the name Brown University, pretty much. So he actually the name the area of the intelligence the so system who are engineering as artificial intelligence. After that, the first the we will see a little bit more later, but the first stage of the AI focus on the programming. So Lisp, L I S B Lisp program language was proposed and the use for the such a intelligence system. Then the government actually fund a lot. The DARPA, the DEFEN, the they the give the, a lot of money to the such artificial intelligence first time and the so on, but the there is a slide that shows the thing, let's see the I thought I have the slide and history of it, right? <coughs> This slide later, I will introduce. Oh, yeah, okay. AI controversial. So, it was proposed 50 years ago before, but so people, the, uh, mostly the government agents, the DARPA defense, they the fund a lot, they gave the money to the AI researcher. But they, you know the, what happened at this time? It's a cold war. Okay? During the cold war, they need something. Practically, like the satellite, or the, send the person to the moon, or the missile, like the not AI system. So it's cut, 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 so it's the first AI winter. So then after that, uh, there's uh, the, the people still the work through the AI and the so on. Then the, there are some kind of the, uh, the booming in the AI, the Lisp, and the system, and the so on and the algorithm, but another <coughs> AI winter happened during the 1990, up to the upper the 1990, because at the time, it's the internet, was it to the people in net, the investor lot, and research on the internet, and the so on, they cannot receive the money. Without money, we cannot do the research, unfortunately. Okay? So, it's an irony, during the war, okay, war time, actually engineering, and the science and medical is really proved a lot because we can get a lot of money from the uh, the government and then it's a survival or not right the for the government and the country so they the government the country they spend a lot of money and uh, it's really and specifically medical part so they actually has a lot of the real case so that is the best way to improve the such a skill and knowledge on the medical part. So, but so unfortunately, AI cannot receive the money during the time because of other area of that. So you know the AI need a lot of the computation part. So we need the money to buy the huge powerful computer, but uh, we couldn't. So that is the second AI winter. Then the beginning of 2000, the people had more and more data. It's uh, hard to process uh, such a data. I introduced a little bit about uh, such a uh, big data, and uh, why if you already took the big data, you already know the main problem of the big data. So we have more and more data, then uh, we need uh, something, the opportunity to use uh, such a uh, big data and uh, so on, and the diverse data. So AI the, can get the chance to event. So they got the money. For example, when I was a student, 
my the <coughs> professor in AI classes suggest do not use the neural network. Because neural network it takes it consume a lot of computational power and it takes a long time even though it provides reasonable accurate but uh, you don't know what's going on so instead uh, use the uh, other the uh, machine learning technique like the software to vector machine where the expectation maximizer that I'm going to introduce uh, today and the next uh, the class. Then I didn't study a lot the neural network when I was a student, the PhD student. So I applied uh, my the Data mining problem, uh, the is a uh, expectation maximization, the clustering algorithm. So instead of using the neural network, but so when we have uh, such a huge amount of data, also not government, but uh, from the company, the people, the researcher can get the more money for the such an AI. So nowadays AI govern the most of the thing. Nowadays, if you go to the any ties or any area of the conference. So 80, 90 percent are related to the AI, machine learning, deep learning, and the so on. So that is the AI. Okay. So, what is intelligence so on? Then, so we understand that from the computer, so we are using computer, so to the way the computer, we have computer science. So the other part probably hardware. Computer engineering, some of them are the overlap, but uh, we can say the computer science. Then, uh, if we focus on the, such an intelligent system, engineer, and the programming, so we are saying the AI. So, the area covered by the AI is bigger and bigger. It's getting bigger nowadays. Okay? So, that is one of the reasons, even the, my class data mining. So, I am using the hot almost half of the, my lecture for the deep learning and the, such a the part. So AI is getting bigger, including the application app, everything. Then, to solve the problem in the AI, we can use the machine learning. So machine learning is the kind of algorithm approach how to train the machine to get the intelligence. Okay? So it's more practical the algorithm approach. And AI is the system, right? That include the algorithm, that include the application, that include the something, the language, and the everything. That is the AI, artificial intelligence, so then the, that form the brain. But the machine learning focus on how to make the uh, system intelligence, how to train. That is the machine learning part. So if you are interested more like the algorithm, then the, unfortunately we don't have the machine learning class, but uh, you can take the machine learning class. So my, the, Plus, even though I'm teaching the data mining, I will, it will be based on the machine learning. Then the, we try to utilize the machine learning to solve the main problem of the data mining. So machine learning, so it has a bunch of different algorithms. So we can classify, so grouping such an algorithm. One is a statistical approach. Long time, so we have been using, uh, we are using the, such a statistics to process the data, to understand the data, to solve the real problem, statistics. Then, so you heard about the Bayesian, or the Bayesian algorithm, or the naive Bayesian, and the, the PCA. So those are, or regression that I'm going to inter briefly introduce today, is based on the statistics. Another the approach in the machine learning is the classification. Classification is kind of the classifying. So think about the, our life, the human being, homo sapiens. Every time, every month, the, we need to decide something. We need to classify something, yes or no. Not only the testing, but the, you're the real problem. Even the, when you are dating, so you need to decide whether I like her, I like him, or I hate him. It's a decision process among the different classes. Class can be the binary class, yes or no, zero or one. But uh, sometimes it can be multiple classes, A, B, C, D, E. You need to decide, classify. How? Based on your experience. If nobody teaches how to date, you don't know who is the, the nice girl, who is the handsome guy, so, but uh, you heard. Sometimes directly learn, or the, sometimes you can hear, or, the, you, or the, some of the experience it's a genetic. It's inherited by the DNA. 
Okay, that's the nature of the, our the entire the, the nature. Okay, not only human being but the, the animal they inherit the good thing in inherit. Okay, then it can be survived. The best fit so to the nature. So such are the experience based on the experience, based on training. We can decide the solve the problem. We can decide the specific class. That is called the classification. <coughs> Another part is called the clustering. Clustering, the classification is based on the experience, training. Okay? So on the other hand, the clustering without such a class, without such a experience. How many group of that here? How many group? Two. Everyone know this is uh, two. Even though we never trained that this one, never get the experience, based on the location of them, just using the location characteristic. So we can group by two, like that. Okay, we can make the two group. This is called the clustering analysis. So sometimes uh, this one is called the unsupervised learning. We don't have so I'm not teaching you. So instead you can learn by yourself based on what? Criteria. This is the object function, you can the minim, uh, maximize the object functions, so for example, like that. So on the other hand, the classification is based on the training. Okay? So this is apple, this is apple, this is apple, that so you learn. So you have the concept of the apple in your mind, then the, when you see the new apple in the, on the market, you know. I can eat the dip because uh, I know. So that is the classification. So it's uh, called the supervised learning. Deep learning is starting from the classification. Deep learning the purely based on the training. Training really a lot. Because of that, it's called the deep learning. The other, the machine learning algorithm sometimes is called the shallow, shallow learning. Because it's a deep, Opposite of deep is a shallow. It's a simple process. So, my class, the data mining class, cover the both the shallow learning and the deep learning, the supervised learning, and also the unsupervised learning. But uh, if you are interested in the this, the deep learning part, the Dr. Oshib Mahmoud offer the deep learning. So this is the area of the machine learning or the AI. Then you can study in depth. I don't have you know time to introduce everything neural network, artificial neural network, the convolutional neural network, recurrent neural network, the LSTM, the GAN, and even at this moment, I believe that at least the one paper per minute is produced. It's a new and the new approach coming up. So we cannot cover the each and every details of that. Instead, I'd like to briefly introduce the, the each the area of the machine learning and the, regarding to the deep learning I think the few pretty much covered up to the LSTM and a little bit about this semester a little bit about the I'd like to introduce the Khan. Khan is the most popular nowadays okay so reinforcement learning but uh, I'm not sure how much I can introduce. So in your project, you are going to use the, this classification problem to decide whether this is a stop sign or not. If it's stop sign, stop. Operate your car. So one of the that part, based on this one, the data mining. Data mining utilizes this machine learning algorithm, but it's a part of nowadays even the AI. It was separated uh, several years before. Nowadays, I believe it's a part of AI. But the first thing is data mining is uh, starting from the data and database. So some of the data mining tool and technique use a relational database. Have you ever seen <coughs> that technique based on the relational database? No. So it starts from, it focuses on the data itself. Then the, from the data, data is like this. And there might be something interesting or the meaningful pattern of the data. We call the, such a pattern as the knowledge. <coughs> so it's called, the, it's not the intuitive, the knowledge. It's not intuitive, directly. Directly, you can see the, from the data, 
one, 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 ten. So ten is the, no, not like that. So by applying the, such a machine learning technique, so we can work the statistics, the classification, deep learning. So our goal is to, to find the, such a pattern. One knowledge, then apply the, this knowledge for the real life. And sometimes when you search the, such a pattern, you need to know how data is processed. So sometimes from the statistical approach, so you can get the variable. You can find something variable. Why? This one is the yes, this one is no. So you can apply the, such a the reason to real problem. It's called the inference. So you can the, infer the, or the, derive the, such a knowledge from the pattern. Unfortunately, deep learning is not easy. Somebody is separate this one, but I don't think so. So there might be parents that why deep learning decide uh, this is a cat, this is a dog, and uh, this is uh, the stop sign. But uh, the human being, Homo sapiens, may not understand because it's uh, too much data. So there might be. So I believe that this one also can be used for the knowledge discovery. Sometimes data mining is called the knowledge discovery. So KD. So even though our work class is named as data mining, we will cover the mostly the, this one. So nowadays I believe so I should have changed the title of this class is data mining based on using the machine learning, something like that. So we are going to use the, this course, the mostly the such a machine learning. And then I love to apply, not from the simulation or testing, but uh, I love to apply such a uh, technique algorithm to the real life problem. That is the reason so I offer the project that you guys did, uh, can apply the, such a technique to the autonomous car project. So that is the origin of the machine learning. So we will cover the throughout the semester, the, such a, the technique, then more and more the deep learning part. So we will have a chance to talk about the more details of the deep learning. Not right now. I'd like to save the time. So, such an AI system, data mining, machine learning, nowadays everywhere. Okay? Even though you do not the major in computer science, you should know. So think about your friend who never been interested in the computer science computer, but they are talking about the AI, okay? Because the AI is in our real life, and uh, as I introduced last time, it's a change of the paradigm in industry. So that is called the new industrial revolution. It's a data-driven society. When we have data, our source of the money is changing. Okay? At the time, the AI, since the AI believed such a change of the paradigm in the industrial revolution. So, please. And it's a good news is you are in front. Okay? You are in front. So, the huge chance, huge opportunity for you, not only just uh, the getting the job offer letter from the big company, but uh, you can do the kind of startup and uh, think about the uh, even though Ford brought us conveyor belt in 1910, 1920, but uh, because of the power of automotive industry, still there are a lot of jobs. So mechanic and the gas station and uh, people designer, car industry, car manufacturer, huge job and the huge money over there. Similarly, the new data sciences such as the new the AI the first generation of industrial revolution will give the huge opportunity for you. If you are asking me, as if you are asking to me the specific one, I do not know, but uh, I believe there might be huge kind of ocean, blue ocean. Of the, so it's your job to find the specific opportunity. Okay. So it's everywhere. It's just uh, the typical the application consumer marketing, and uh, security also. And uh, I don't believe the product in the stock market. If I have, I don't have to be here, right? I can make the money, even the 5% of profit margin, so huge. 
from the worst year, the analysis, they actually the fighting with the 0.1% of the profit margin. But the, if you search the Google data a lot, such a thing, but uh, because the economic sum market especially is uh, not, it's very hard to the uh, to create the object function or the centralized because uh, if Donald uh, Trump tweet right now the something is a huge rupture. Who knows the it's uh, another outbreak of the virus, the new coronavirus. Actually, new coronavirus from the China is affect a huge sum market. So last uh, a couple of years after Trump. Uh, uh, the you know, the be a uh, president. The summer case, uh, the it's really the work going on, but uh, recently it's a drop down. So there are <coughs> huge barrier. So nobody knows, but so it's not easy to predict. But there are other opportunity. Okay, language is already done. The Google Translator, the, I think the, whether or not you realize you use uh, every time. So, for example, I'm using the WeChat and uh, Messenger. I think the, at least the three or four different Messenger, but uh, sometimes uh, uh, the message in the other language, I'm using the Google Translator and the Sona. I believe, but uh, eventually, such a, the idea and the uh, intelligence or the algorithm will be used for the humanoid robot. Okay, humanoid robot is the kind of the compile all the functionality, all the area of computer science. So, but still, the, it's not the easy to build such a humanoid robot, unlike the Star Wars movie. However, so from the MIT Dynamics or the uh, UCLA the Robotics the Lab, they actually already developed the military robot. They actually faster than the Cheetah, and uh, they are uh, very stable robots. Okay. And also, actually, the Watson is controversial. Somebody said Watson is uh, not so good the shape not right now because uh, after the Western won the game in jeopardy it's a 19 uh, 2011 12. so anyway so the Western computer actually he's the guy who most the won the jeopardy but uh, at the time the Western actually the beat the guy but after that the uh, IBM decided to reform the IBM business they said all the manufacturing part, including Lenovo, the laptop, and the IBM chip, power chip, and semiconductor, sold everything except the AI. So they believe the they, IBM can survive the, as an AI service company. One of the examples is one of my friends. He actually the graduated the same the elementary school in Korea, my hometown, but we never met after graduation, but uh, surprisingly, when I visit the IBM, so we met each other, but it's very easy to recognize his face because his chin is really unique like that. But he worked for the semiconductor business, IBM, in the Austin. So Austin area is very well known for the semiconductor because of the UT Austin, so they uh, the, actually, there is uh, one of the biggest uh, the department the, who produces uh, such as electrical engineering and so on. So TI, Texas Instrument and Samsung, they actually huge uh, the, the factory for the semiconductor. But IBM had, but uh, several years before IBM sold uh, their the semiconductor part. Instead of layout the old employee, what what he it, uh, in the IBM Semiconductor Company is uh, he designed a chip. So his role is, the, do you think the what is the most important critical part of the designing the CPU? What is the most important part? Speed? Controller? Designing the, such a, the instruction? 
Anyone? Anyone from the electrical engineering? Semiconductor? Yeah. Especially the controller and the CPU. It's a power. So power is the most problem. You see a lot of computation that consume a lot of power. So optimizing power. So you can put as many the uh, uh, the core as possible, and you can. But because of power, you cannot. Okay. So you need to optimize that. He focus. His job is to optimize the energy consumption when they design. But he was assigned to the civil engineering. Then the, what he is doing is optimizing the real power in the Manhattan. So, because it's very similar, the power line, even still, the, the, you do not, you cannot know. The, if power out, one time, the several years before, the Manhattan was power outage, but they do not know what is the problem. It's a very complicated source of the power plant. It's old, it's kind of the web. So they not like the, the partition. So, but the best way is to optimize, the way, not wasting, less and less the waste of the such energy and optimize. So it's the same, almost the same, the approach to optimize the power consumption for the civil engine. So he is working for the but going back to this one, the Watson. So. I even believe that Watson can have their business. So they try to apply first to the Watson computer, Watson the AI system to the test kit. So they try to the diagnose, the, like the cancer. They first apply the cancer, so they work with the Cleveland Clinic and so on, but output was not so good. So it's that they are struggling with it. But so I, I, the Watson is the one of the area to apply the AI to make the human being, like the human being robot. If you go to the TJ Watson Center, it's a Yonkers. It's, I think it's a 40 mile the distance. I had a couple of chances to visit the IBM with a student before, not right now. My best friend, he left for Korea after that, and, uh, not easy to set up. They have a tour to see the Watson. Then the, you can see just the, the one computer leg. <laughs> That's it. That is the Watson. That's true. But the AI industry is uh, bigger and expand more and more. Okay, so do the opportunity. I did a couple of projects using the AI. The what? This one is the voice to query, changing the voice to the SQL language. One of the students uh, did a similar thing. Nowadays is. It was uh, tough before, but uh, complicated. Nowadays, it's uh, very simple. You can use AI library, the machine learning library, and the cloud computing. Okay. So that's the introduction part, and let's start with So starting with the data mining, so this one shows the really good example of how to use the data mining. This is not official service right now because the people too much believe that this one, but it uh, cannot be guaranteed. Okay, that may cause, uh, even though the CTC is slower than this, so it cannot be the guaranteed and so it's kind of a, the can be sued, no issue. For instance, on this date, Google for trends detected a significant so, idea of the, this one is uh, the, we can just uh, the, no, 
count the number of keywords for flu, for the symptom of the flu, like the fever, okay? Or cough, then the, if the, think about the flu is outbreak, then the, a lot of people search in the search of word related to the flu. Then the, we can, the guess, there might be something wrong. Outside. So that is the idea of the Google Trend. Nowadays, Google actually provides a service for the Google Trend. So Google Trend can be used for what? Business. Business, so if you are doing the pizza business, you know the relate, some related word to the pizza. Okay? Then the, you can the, keep tracking of the social trend. Of the Earlier detection of flu activity enables public health officials. This kind of thing can be used for the right now the new coronavirus in China. The, the, but the, it's a little bit different situation in China. They are using the more like the Baidu different uh, the search engine. But the, this is the idea of the using the typical. So first actually the we are the idea of the using the. Uh, data mining techniques, simple data analytics technique for the real life problem. So, data mining is doing such a similar thing. But uh, it started from the data, so it's a bigger and more and more data. So this is kind of the history of the data science. Somebody said the data mining is kind of data science. I don't want to argue the which one is this, but it's uh, similar, very similar. So the, for, from the science point of view, so science means uh, we'd like to solve the problem in nature. Okay? Then the long time before, definitely, we test. So Newton dropped the apple first. So the, see, the, it's the same thing, small, large, regardless of the size, so they drop the same speed and the so on. So it's empirical science. Then the, we'd like to prove the why. So it's a theoretical science using math. Then the need more computation, so like the helping of the computer, like the calculator, like that, the computational sciences. Because of that, we have the first generation of the computer, the so on. Then the, until the 1990. But nowadays, people believe the, it's not the problem of the such a computation part theory, but as we have seen in the Google trend, the problem is the data itself. If we have the huge amount of data, or the good data, or the something data, we can solve the problem, a lot of problems. Sometimes we can easily solve the problem, sometimes we need to apply such a more complicated the, uh, the algorithm used in the machine learning. So that is the we are in the such a data science era. So we have a still use a relational database, right? So that, uh, so data, it is true, even though we are using the relational database model and relational database management system for the BI, the business intelligence, and so on, but it is true, our data is diverse, data type is diverse, and also B. So relation, as we, if you already took the database or the big data course, we realize it's a kind of, it has a limitation. Why? Because it's a too much constraint, condition. It's not flexible. So it's uh, limited. So currently we have the right, diverse data and also huge volume of the data. That is uh, our opportunity to process. Okay, so in the data mining, so our goal is to find the knowledge. Knowledge means it's a pattern. Pattern means what is a pattern? Something repeats. Repeat it. Yeah. If something repeated, repeated again and again, that is a pattern, that is knowledge. If you train the, your kid, so different, sometimes this one is apple, sometimes this is a, the banana, this is the other thing. So he or she may not get the, such a concept of the knowledge for the something, okay? Repeat and repeat. I believe best way to study is the repeat, repeat. Read and read, read again, and uh, study. So, knowledge is a pattern, pattern is a repeated thing. Actually, if you go back to, we will see the detail, or any the idea, any error is used in the machine learning, whether statistics, the classification, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, deep learning, it's a repeated. 
Replicated. Replicated, replicated. This is a, in deep learning is called the epoch. It's an iteration. So many of the algorithms are based on the iteration. We again and again until satisfying condition. Okay? Sometimes it's called, we can use the error, error rate, or the, something, the object function, until satisfaction, then we can do it again and again. So that's the actual idea of the such a AI, machine learning system. So repeated finding, repeated pain, the pattern. The problem is how, how to keep such a repeated the part. So for example, deep learning, the neural network uses a hidden layer as a value. We don't know how much, but so it can be used. So, okay. so this is the general process of how to uh, find the pattern or the how to do the knowledge discovery or data mining. So we need the data, okay? Then the, we collect the data from the bunch of different sources called the data warehouse. Then the, we can select the, some relevant data, okay? Or then the, after that, the, we can the, process such a data. That is called the data mining. At that time, we can use such a machine learning technique to mine the data. Then the, we can find the pattern. If that pattern is reasonable, it's called the evaluation. So we need to evaluate how much accurate or how much true. And so how much close to the, our the target. If that is uh, okay, then the, we can the, uh, the accept, admit as a knowledge. After we have a knowledge, we can apply that knowledge to the real problem. Okay? Sometimes it's called the training and testing in terms of classification. Train and train, if that is uh, okay, 99% accurate, then we can test real to the real problem. Or sometimes it's going back to the here, then the modify and the feedback to the data, then do it again until we satisfy the return. So this is the general process of the data mining or knowledge discovery. Recently, the, we use the social media data. Social media data is also data. But it's slightly different, a lot different, from the traditional data. Traditional data is alphanumeric data, which means the string and the number. They are organized by table type, like the relational model. Okay? It's a color or attribute and a bunch of data. But the social media data is from the first, is from my social network. They are connected. The most important part of the social uh, media is connected. Okay, if you're not connected, they cannot survive. Think about any social media, social network, Facebook, Instagram, others, WeChat, the Messenger, anything, they try to connect more and more users. Sometimes they suggest, sometimes they the hook up, sometimes the so sensitive data to like, to connect you, to make a friend. Because the more and more the user and the message and the entities are connected, it's more powerful to spread out the information. Then you can make the money. The company would like to set such a connection to the business. So it can be used for the advertisement, like the YouTube. So Google actually the 60-70% of the revenue from the such an ad, ad sense. Even though they pay a lot, so it's not free money. So by watching the uh, movie, so the advertisement will be exposed. Then the day, actually the company pay a lot for that. Okay. So then uh, you can use the uh, data mining for the social media data. It's called the social media data mining. Not very popular nowadays. Also, it can be used for the business intelligence. So it's a steer. The BI solution is for the uh, business solution or the uh, business marketing and so on. Still used one of the biggest uh, market, the uh, industry and the uh, IT. Okay, so you already see the digital brain. 
how to process the video. So traditional data analysis is more like a statistical approach. So statistical approach is uh, when you have the data, we will see more details uh, after break, but so we have data. So our goal is to understand the, this data. So for example, data is the, the exam score. The exam score. What is the easiest and the best way to understand the exam scores from the midterm exam? Probably you will ask me, what is the mean, average, right? If you are smart, you may ask the various or distribution, like that. Why? You don't want, definitely the professor will not release the name and the score. Instead, you try to know the how much difficult this exam this score and the how much tough. Then my score is here. The I try to know where am I ranked it's like that. Okay. Then at the time, the mean. What is the mean? Average. What is the average? What is the average? The sum divided by the total. Yes, that's the function to calculate the average. Average is mean is from actually the we will see today. It's so from expected value in terms of probability. So everybody has the same the weight of the score. So 70 give the 70 point. 60 give the 60 point. And the 50 give the 50 point. Then we can combine such a old expected value divided by number. So that is the expected value. One of the expected value to understand what? How this data is formed. Okay. So it's the center. We try to know the center. The one point that the formed this group of data. Okay. So this is one of the way, so traditional way to understand the data set. So not only the mean, we can use the variance, the covariance, and relation, and statistical analysis. These are the, the traditional way. Okay? We try to directly, like the surgeon, we try to directly the apply, operate something, the approach, statistical approach, to understand the data. Okay? So this is called the uh, traditional way, and uh, so on. The problem of the, such a traditional approach to understand, to analyze the data is when we have the bigger and bigger size of data, so it's a hard process, hard to understand. Also, another problem is if we have only the one value of the, like the data mining score, it's okay. But what about the data mining, midterm, and final? And the assignment, all different, so 100 score for each student. How do I understand? Some of the students very good at the midterm and final, but the, the other student may good for the project, this one. So how do I understand? The, this is the data mining plus the score. It's not easy. If you just average all of this, does it make sense? Everybody knows it doesn't make sense, right? Sometimes we can give the weight, right? Some of the students complain. Why this one is 30? I'm very good at this one. So that means if we have more and more the such element, which is called dimension. So when we have only one square, it's a one dimensional data. It's easy to apply the statistics. Two dimensional, three, four, five, six, n dimensional data, not easy. So we, who is good, who is not? Okay. Same thing when I decide to whether I'm going to date with her. What is the factor criteria to decide whether you are going to marry or not? A lot of things. Okay, it's almost impossible to formalize the such a, the function for marry or not, right? Love or not, right? Because such an emotion is really a lot of factor, right? So it's a high dimensional data to decide. So traditional the data, traditional approach, it's not easy to process 
to analyze such a large amount of data, also high dimensional data. So it's a, the statistical approach is limited, but still worthwhile. It's just simple. Some are not all the problems are such a the complicated. Sometimes the statistical approach can easily solve the problem, like the still Bayesian loop. Bayesian approach is one of the very popular approaches to solve the problem. And also, it doesn't cost a lot. You can, you can quickly use it as a function, input and output like that. <coughs> so I already introduced that. So what kind of data we have? So as you can see, a bunch of different data sources. Not only alpha numeric data, we have the streaming data, sensor data. So streaming data is one of the categories of the big data. So if you only took the big data, there are 3V, 4V, and the so on. So volume, and the velocity, and the variety, and the so on. So one of them is stream. Because the data is coming out every moment, every time. So that is uh, one interesting. Time series data. So two things. The, the current the data have the two characteristics. The time. It's a time series. Along the time, the data will be generated. Another factor is geographical location. The geographical location is another characteristic of the data. Okay. Also, graph. Think about the social network, social media network. How can we keep the, such a, the connection? So relational database is not easy. And uh, so we think about the, to apply graph. The, such as the more complicated the data structure. Object relation and Virginia spatial. The spatial data is a spatial temporal data, is another characteristic of the current data set. And also multimedia data, Imi image. So, image was not easy to analyze uh, using the uh, traditional approach. Statistical approach, like the regression model, can regression model classify this is the cat, this is the dog from the image. So it's almost impossible, not working. So, but we have more and more image and the video data. It's a, also audio data, so multimedia data. So uh, when I I moved to the United States for my PhD in 2002, it's so one year after 9-11. So I watched the news in my hometown the, the when the World Trade Center were collapsed. So at the time, I studied GRE and the TOEFL <coughs> for admission, but I thought at the time, can I go to the, can I get the admission because of that event? But anyway, so I got the admission, so I uh, the moved to the United States, and the first day, I realized that most of PhD students at the time so they already decide the advisor, their supervisor. But uh, when I, because I spend most of my life without studying. So I didn't study and I just got a job and I worked for the company. I never took the data structure class or the computer science program language until I joined my PhD. My master was different. I get my master from the kind of evening class. So, while I was working for the company, I took the several courses related to the IT and the so on, so I got the master degree. Then I decided to study more. But uh, when, at the time, I didn't know what is uh, even the PhD. I just want to study. So first day, I realized that I'm the only one who didn't decide the supervisor for my PhD. So I met, the, because I was a database administrator, so I tried to. Uh, the study major in the database area. So I met uh, at the time my old university had uh, five professor for data and database. The area it was big. So I met uh, all of this and uh, all of them. Uh, they said database, the main system like the relational database and or conceptual design or the ER model. It's already done in 2002. So not much opportunity for 
why don't you study it network? <laughs> or something like that. Then my supervisor suggests, if you are interested in the database, why don't you study research on the multimedia data? Then apply the data mining technique. That was my PhD topic. So, so I uh, analyzed the surveillance camera video, surveillance video using the data mining technique by applying clustering. So if you actually put the camera over there, so then the, if you track of the object, it's kind of that there might be pattern. So most of people coming the this one and the whole way, like the, then they're going to the city. But if something unusual thing, outlier, it's called the outlier, unusual thing happen like the he come here but the, over the desk, jumping over the desk like that, it's a kind of unusual pattern. So then we can alarm like this. That's the idea of my thesis, 2006. I know that right now it's not new idea, everybody knows such a thing, but at the time, it was not. So, so then, it's uh, the multimedia data. Nowadays, it's uh, one of the, and also another the reason why the multimedia data image and video are the good example application of the deep learning is the image is like the matrix. But the operation of the matrix is uh, at least two times of loop, loop by loop inside the loop, which means huge computation and I. So you can do the such operation using the CPU and the crash card. The typical the processor, like the add or the something the instruction will be the general instruction will be used, but it uh, takes a long more time. It's not efficient and more more power consumption. But this one is uh, similar as what well, matrix. So if we use uh, some, if we have the uh, something special instruction for two processes such a matrix, we can speed up. For example, what? GPU game. So if you like the game, so one of the problem is the delay of the display. Everybody wants the fancy, nice, high quality the display and the moving very fast. No, the delay of that. So because of that, you purchase very expensive Nvidia GPU device. So GPU was used for actually developed by developed for what? The game display purpose. Why? Because display is uh, like a matrix operation. It's a low by color. Then people realize that this matrix image are not used to this one. So now GPU use for the computation of the such a matrix type. So image is a good example to be processed. Then in deep learning, we have a feature. We want one, one, two, one, one, something like that. And another. So we can form the same matrix style, the vector, set of vector, then also deep learning get the benefit of using GPU. Then the people believe that we have, if we have a number of such a matrix, this one is called tensor. So then TensorFlow was proposed by the, I, the Google. So this one is a specialized for the uh, processing. Then this one will be used for the deep learning process. So as a back end of the deep learning, we are going to use a TensorFlow. Even though you do not have the GPU, so we don't, we, it doesn't matter. Okay, so even though my laptop has only CPU, so we can use a CPU, the TensorFlow. Maybe slower, much, much slower, but the, uh, unless uh, you are doing the research on the uh, deep learning as a PhD or master, so it's okay to use the TensorFlow or the CPU. And the text, even the classified the text data, like the natural language <coughs> processing, we try to know the meaning of the, such a, the text data, natural language processing, translation, and understanding, the extracting the meaning of the data, uh, the word. So I talk about, I already introduced a lot of the, such a, the frequent pattern, okay? So also generalization and correlation analysis. So we will cover the details more the, from now on. <coughs> okay. 
So data mining is an interdisciplinary area that combines not only the computer science knowledge, but also you can see the from the computer science and machine learning and pattern mechanisms, statistics is also important. Nowadays, even the visualization is more and more important. So somebody said that even the visualization itself is a part of the data science. By visualizing, fancy nicely without any processing, so people can understand, people get the knowledge, something pattern of the data. So visualization is more and more important. To do that, we need a high performance computing and also related to the algorithm and the data structure. Eventually, we'd like to apply such a knowledge to the real application itself. So for the, such a real life problem, not only the computer science knowledge, but the sociology, medical, and uh, education, and business. So those the factors. So think about the, if you meet the, your friend in the other major, they are talking about a different nowadays, really. Then they need. I already introduced the problem of the, such uh, the data. Okay. Then the, we can apply the, such uh, the knowledge and the pattern to the real application. Okay, so let me the, conclude the introduction. I was uh, really the speeder, I really speed up the two start our main, main part, but uh, I'd like to wrap up the introduction part with the uh, issues on the data mining. Okay. So, um, this one is the first problem. Our data is more and more complex and also high dimensional data. When you have the high dimensional data, so it's uh, not easy. So conventional approach to the sort of such a multi-dimensional data, it was like the, why not reduce the dimension? Not all the factors are important for them to hear. So even though we have the this, this, and this uh, score to decide the grade, this one is uh, the 30%, 30%, and 5 to I5, which means this is important. When I rank, when I decide the student, good student or bad student, so all students get the, because the midterm and final exam is uh, easy. They are easy. So 30, so 199, 100, but even though 5%, the so good student always got 5-5, five, five, and the other 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. So this one is more important. So we can ignore the other, the, the score, except this, the attendance, for example. So I can use the, this attendance to decide the A or F. So this is the, redu the dimensionality reduction. So reduce the dimension. So this one is also very, very helpful for the current data analysis also. So we are going to see the one of the major, the, such a uh, dimension reduction technique, which is called the PCA, the principle, principle component analysis. So that is one of the example. But nowadays, since we have very, very powerful computing environment, including such a TensorFlow and so on, we can directly use multi-dimensional data, okay? Then let it go, okay? Let it go, see it until it, that's satisfied. Do it again and again and again, then we can finally uh, solve the problem. For example, images. So when you watch the movie, so what kind of quality? Nobody watch the SD. HD, ultra HD, 4K, like that. How many pixels? 4K. So if you are watching the SD, 800 by the 600, how many pixels? 48, 0, 0, 0, 0. <coughs> so 5K, okay. 5K, the uh, and the multiply by 3, RGB, like that. Then we can use each pixel as the dimension. So how many dimension? Almost a half million diameter. It's uh, impossible. It was impossible the conventional computer environment. Nowadays, with the help of the, such a the new technology, 
the tensor flow and so on, you can uh, actually process such a thing. Problem? You don't know why inside. Very hard to see. As if uh, we cannot understand the inside of the brain, okay? It's very hard to understand why. So somebody called that such a the current deep learning technique, machine learning technique, is called the black box. Okay? So that is the one. Data mining is not only for the computer science. So just like the many other the AI and machine learning, the area is an interdisciplinary, which means you need to understand the domain knowledge, data. So when you are doing the project one, I suggest that why don't you find interesting. Based on your interest, you should know. If you are going to analyze the medical data, you should know what is the problem and what's the meaning of that. The healthcare system, like that. So interdisciplinary. So somebody said uh, in AI era where the data driven society, more important thing is the domain knowledge, expertise, or the hobby on the data. Okay. And the evaluation is also important. Not only so we can evaluate the our the process the data and knowledge, so it's another issue. Okay. Efficiency, yeah, definitely. Scalability. Who knows? So our data is coming, uh, keep coming as a stream, so it should be scalable. So just like the cloud computing support, uh, the, such as scalability. Okay. I already mentioned about the diversity and uh, social impact. Okay. So. I'm going to skip this. Then move to the base topic. Let's have the quick break. So I'm going to start uh, right now. So 7:20. Let's start the 7:30. So we will continue the next. Easy to understand the uh, algorithm itself, and uh, even the hard to understand the code later. So, within I have one hour. If I do not have enough time, may use the little bit more the next class. But I will try my best because basically I'm going to introduce the fundamental of the mathematics, including probability and statistics. That's one part. Another part is the linear algebra. So if you already complete the calculus level, the mathematics, I think the, you guys already know the most of part. It's kind of a remind. Okay, you don't have to worry about too much. Okay, so definitely understanding the mathematics is a crucial important to understand the machine learning algorithm, specifically the probability and the statistics and also linear algebra. As I introduced here, the linear algebra is the to solve the stem of equation that you learned, uh, I think, the introductory part of the algebra long time before. Then the, if we have the system of equations, so you learn the matrix to solve the such a part. So it's a linear algebra. Then the, eventually we will see the optimization so we will see what is optimization, but the details of optimization will be discussed in the when we uh, the discuss about the major part of the machine learning technique. Okay. I, I'd like to skip the introductory part. So these are the major uh, the notation. It's not only for the this class; it's used for everywhere. So like the. First, the set. We use the most uh, the crystal letter. What is a set, by the way? Collection of number. Okay, in mathematics. So why we need the set A? Set. 
First, number itself is one of the major characteristic of the number is number itself is infinite. So that is the problem. So think about the, our the exist, existence. So we are not immortal. So eventually we will be die, and uh, something uh, it will be the part of nature. So our the life is uh, so our the nature existing itself is the finite, but the number itself is infinite. It's a really big gap. It's a difference. So even the same problem when people long time ago they try to understand what's the nature, what's the society, what is my life. It's a philosophy, the problem. So they try like to understand how the, this nature is organized and uh, what is the fundamental source of what the element of the nature. Somebody believe the, uh, they the consider the soil and sky and uh, those are the fundamental element of the nature. Who are the other people <coughs> believe the, like the from the physics and chemistry, they try to understand uh, such uh, the fundamental of the nature. Then the one people, one group of people believe that this nature consists of the number. They try to understand uh, uh, the problem in the nature, nature problem with the mass, the number. So then the, they study the, what is the characteristic of the number and the, what is like the, 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 the prove the Pythagorean theorem and the so on. Then there are two major areas of the mathematics. The people would like to understand the, such a problem in nature as an equation. It's an algebra. So they'd like to solve the, such a problem in algebra way. Algebra way. Another way is geometry, like that. Then the, we have the such a the two major parts of the mathematics and the, now we are studying. But the main issue is such a number is uh, infinity. So how can we deal with uh, such an infinite number? Even our life is not infinity. So then, for example, even a plus b is equal to b plus a. Everybody know? What's the rule of this one? Commutative. So you can change the order. Then the, we have the associative and the, such a rule. But uh, did you test the, all the cases? Nobody. But how do you believe? Doesn't make sense. Uh, even though you don't test uh, the, all the cases, uh, how can you believe that A plus B associative? The commutative is true or not? So people think about the way. So instead of the considering each and every number, so why not <coughs> to consider A group of number? Like the one, two, three, four, such a whole number as the natural number set. Okay? So, you, which means it's kind of decide the domain or topology or the field of area. So make a boundary. Like the, in the database design, the, we create the schema. Schema is the boundary of your data. Then the, we'd like to describe within the, this the schema, we'd like to describe the, our the data in terms of what? Attribute. So attribute like the name, ID, address for student, like that. Okay, similarly, in the we did by the grouping. It's an infinity, but the number are inside the set, within a set. Then now we can apply the such a the rule, axiom or whatever theorem. We can do the similar thing in the data processing, data mining and so on. We have a data domain. Then if we have unlimited, the infinite data, it's totally different problem. Instead, if we limit by the such a set, even though the elements are infinity, we can do something. So that is the reason starting off, it's a definition of our area. It's a playground. Our playground is the set. Then, in, the, in a set, we have element, each item. The so name may be different. Sometimes in the database area, this is called the instance or the tuple, like that. This one is a set or relation, but uh, you can the, the conceptually understand. They are the same name. So it's a set and element. So if we have the, such an absolute 
it's not absolute, instead it's called the cardinality. Cardinality means it's how many objects, how many items, how many number, how many the data, it's a cardinality. Good. Sometimes you can see the this old, the letter. This one is called the vector. Okay? So what is a vector? Everybody heard about the vector. And what is a vector? What is the opposite of a vector? Scalar. What is the difference between what is the common thing? Scalar and the vector? Magnitude. In other words, quantity. It's a quantity. It's a something value, something existing. The magnitude, what kind, quantity, and the, the scalar and the vector, both of them are the common thing. <coughs> but what is the difference from your math class? So 10 years, 20 years ago in your math class, what is the different thing, different characteristic of the vector from the scalar? It has direction. Okay. So direction is the easiest way to make the student, elementary and high school, and the, such a student understand the vector. In other words, <coughs> the vector, when you, when you learn the algebra, algebra is, for example, you can represent the y equal f of x, the function, into the graph x and the y axis. So this one is y equal to x plus 1, like this. Okay. How many variables? Input is the x and output is the y. You have the one variable. <coughs> Sometimes you have, may have the two variables f of x comma y. So two variables. So x and y determine c. So you can represent, try your best, three dimensional is x, y, then you can determine the c. What about one more variable? And one more. So x1, x2, x3, x n, not easy, infinity. So, is there any way to represent such a group of the input variable? So, at the time we define this one as the vector. So, vector is a group of elements. This kind of a generalization. Then, the, this data has something characteristic. It's a different from the one value, scalar value. Okay, a or x. X itself is x. It's quantity, magnitude. But the, when you have the, this one, the, as we have seen the multi-dimensional data, each of them has the, their own quantity, but the, by combining, what's the meaning of that? So in terms of geometry, we can represent as the direction. But the direction is not perfect way to represent the characteristic of the vector. It's kind of data itself characteristic. Okay. So that is the vector. Vector is kind of a generalization of the such a group of the feature, the input data, in terms of data analysis. In the data analysis, so our data set, so how many instances you have? One, so I have million. So each instance has the probably the first step that you need to understand during when you search the data set or problem on the table. So first thing is you need to understand the data set. It shows the definitely attribute. A is the, the H is the height, the X is the weight, and the B is the, the date, and the so on. Because each of them has their own meaning and their own the value, but the combining, we don't know. So that's the reason we try to analyze this one. So we consider this one as a vector. Vector and vector, one vector, two vector, three, by grouping, it's a vector set. Okay? <laughs> then they formed what? Matrix system. So it's a tensor. Then we can use the tensor for, for the processing data. So that is the vector. Then when we use the double bracket, the absolute, that is the norm. Norm is the length of the, this one, magnitude of the vector. Okay? Norm is the magnitude of the vector. Yes. So this 
is a summation, everyone knows this is an integral summation used for discrete, and this is a continuous. So the number has the characteristic of the continuous. So we uh, the mostly we are dealing with the sum the discrete but not always. Some of the data will be the continuous. So we are going to see both the discrete and the uh, continuous data. And uh, this is a set of real data set. Sometimes you can see the superscript, that is the space dimension of the, so if two is the one set of the real number, another set of the real number, and the so on. So this is just notation, and the vector I already introduced. If you see the u and v, usually the u, v is used for what? Unit vector. Unit vector is magnitude is one. Okay, it's kind of fundamental, the very basic the vector that form by scalar applying the scalar a and b. It can be other vectors. So this approach will be used in the PCA later. <coughs> so when you see the matrix, usually it's uppercase. So to differentiate from the term, so we use the capital letter. Okay. This is a function y over x. Input is x. So x is a, in terms of a function. What is a function, by the way? Function. The function itself is kind of <coughs> such a black box. If there's an input and there's an output, so if you put the one, output is two. two Four, three, six, and so on. If you put the x, so output is two x. We can say the this function is y equal two x. This is a function. <coughs> you can generalize such a the mapping using the equation. So that is a function that is a y equal f of x. Before we discuss about this one, so how many of you didn't take the calculus? So everybody took the calculus. So. What is, the, when you study and learn the calculus, what is the main, actually the calculus is the final goal of the high school math, okay? Very high level high school math, okay? But if you the successfully finish the year by year by year standard in the United States, so pretty much it, I think that you can pass the calculus, the junior or senior level. But if you are a little bit behind, so you can, take the calculus, the freshman or the sophomore level. If you are advanced, sometimes you can uh, complete the calculus, AP calculus, uh, the, for example, the uh, sophomore <coughs> or junior, mostly junior. But at the time, what is the goal of calculus? Anyone? What did your teacher say why you study calculus? Why? It's a really important question, but surprisingly, not many math teachers mention about that. You never thought about that. Why? But you complain. Why do I need to study calculus? I will never ever use the calculus in my life. <coughs> right? Then, the, but the, think about any curriculum in worldwide. So we have the students from China, the India, and Korea, the, any Educational system igno that ignore the calculus? Probably not. It's the most important part. Why calculus? Logic. 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 But you can learn the logic from the other subject and the even cal the, from the geometry and what the algebra, you can learn the logic. But you can learn the logical, the, such as the thinking and the analytic, the thinking and problem solving from the calculus, but there is a specific problem. So calculus itself would like to understand. So when you solve the certain problem, so there are different ways. Some of those, the people just try and error and try it again, different way and try it again like that. But the, the other people would like to understand the problem first. 
why it caused the problem? Is there any simplified way that this problem into the another problem? But if I can find the easily the problem, the, the simplified way, and go back to this one. Something like that. In mathematics, so there are a bunch of different fields. I mentioned about the first one, the set or field or topology. But the number system or the area, the number <coughs> domain system that we are using is the really small part of the such a the different number system. Real number include the rational number or the natural number, but this real number system, including what complex number, is a small the part. There are a bunch of different fields, totally different area. That is called the topology. Okay? Using the real number system, can you understand the space <coughs> universe? Somebody said the universe is expanding. Does it make sense in the real number? Then what about the out of that space? Right? So we cannot understand the interpret the problem on the nature with even the using the real number. But real number is a study, kind of very basic. So uh, we try like to understand, as I mentioned, the, I think the, the hour ago, the mass is the subject to understand the problem in our nature at using number, right? Then the, if we, our goal is to solving the problem. Any subject solving the problem because our life is not the determined, the God doesn't make the, our life simple. It's uh, always uh, try to solve the problem, try and... So, then, next, we'd like to see the, such a problem using number. Then, not only just one single value number, but it's a bunch of numbers. So, we can, e not easy, we can the represent, show the, such a problem as a, what? Curve. So like the static, the stock market trading, so it's a number. Other the mechanical problem, you can the, create the, such a curve. This curve includes linear, quadratic, and uh, cube, and uh, any type. So even the sine, cosine, tangent, okay, any or pattern. So we can represent such a problem, not everything but many of the problems simplified to the curve. Then, our next problem is, so it's a nature problem, but this is a mathematical problem in curve. Our goal is to understand that this curve. Okay. Starting from what? Linear. So what did you learn? When you learn the linear <coughs> equation, and the y equals ax plus b, slope, you like to find the slope and also intercept the B. Then the, you understand the shift, that Y minus B and AX minus H, what, something like that. So Y and X shift the right, what, up, and like that. So that is the understanding of the After you understand this one, you, you learn quadratic equation. Any difference? Both of them are curved. But this one has Slightly changing, nice. Well, how many times? Just one time. So this is a y equal a x squared plus b x plus c. This is quadratic general form. But what you learn during the algebra, you try like to find what? Why? Because the important part is this one. Here, most important characteristic of the linear is the slope. But the here, most important part is the this one. And also, you'd like to know what slope of the each point. That is called tangent. Because that part, this one is everywhere is the same slope. So if we find A, it's done. But the here is every time different tangent. So we try to know that this is a slope, change of slope. But this one is interesting. The slope is minus, 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 close to the zero, and this time, zero. Then change it to the plus, and they're getting bigger. So this one is good one. 
moment. moment. The moment is very important for the characteristic of the quadratic curve and slope. Then later you know how can you calculate this one? It's a prime two a x. Depending on the x value input value, it will be change. It's a two a x. So minus is a minus and plus is a plus. Like that. So you can understand the quadrant. What about Q? Now you know what is the most important to understand the this curve. If you change the problem in nature into the this one, what is the most important momentum and slope of change? And the, if x is bigger, going up and going down, right? Even though this one is here, this one is in special case, when the momentum, okay? So, it's a plus, 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 zero. Then finally we have generalized of the this. How can you find the this slope? How do I understand the this the curve? You see? So derivative is as I as we discuss, the human being is not infinite. Which means at this point, something point, what is the value of this one? This one? It's not possible to measure the directly because uh, even in geometry, there's uh, no value of the point. Point, there's no size. Okay, it's invisible, but we have point. Similar thing, point, it doesn't exist. But for visualization, we can the point and the end line. But there's no thickness, so it's not simple to measure the content. Okay, slow. How? We can start from the two point and reduce, 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 reduce until meet no. It's a <coughs> limit. Delta x goes to zero. That doesn't mean it's a zero, it's a very close to zero. How much? Less than epsilon. That's the reason epsilon is kind of representative word of computer science. So epsilon, whatever. Right. So honor society is epsilon. So if, what is epsilon? It's a number? What kind of number? Any number? Smaller than you think. It's always smaller than what you think. So how much? It's a 0 0.00001, but epsilon is a smaller than this. Always a smaller than. But it doesn't mean epsilon is a 0. It's a smaller than the what you imagine. So always it's the smallest number. Smaller than the other any smallest number. So that is the epsilon. So this the difference goes to that, then we can find the, this one. Okay. And the similarly. Yeah. So and also this idea goes to here. This one is uh, called minimum. If you have the several thing, it's a local minimum. And uh, this one is called maximum. So later, if we use uh, this idea, it's called the gradient. Gradient is uh, sm slightly applied, smaller and smaller. So gradient this the elbow is near. So from here. I try to go to a minimum. Then, but we cannot jump directly. We don't know where it is. So slightly, 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 until not change. It's a smaller than something requirement. Not if so. It's a year the, the requirement. Then you can stop. Then the my algorithm is a perfect like that. So gradient is in the algorithm. Later, the deep learning and the neural network use a lot. So go back to the here. So calculus actually try to understand the curve. Then if we can change the problem in nature to the curve, then we can solve the all the problem in nature. Actually this is true. So business and uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and even art and the architect, 
they are using the curve. Okay. Doesn't make sense the the two come. It's not curving, it's a random number. No. So think of an architect and violet and all most of the such a problem in our nature, it can be converted to the such a curve. So when you go when if you have a chance to look back your the mathematics calculus book, so like the difficult problem or problem solving, it's like the, this one. So problem is not actually the many people teach why this is who AF like that. This is not important. The more important thing is the in calculus whether we can the understand the problem as a curve. And the, this is kind of technical. Same thing in the data analytics. So if we the analyze or the, if we mine the data, if we can convert the, such a problem into the mathematic the equation, like the function, the curve. And uh, we can, it's not like the real the calculus, we can still the use the sum of the technique, like the gradient is the algorithm, and the sum of the technique in the data analytics. So that is the thing. Among them, first one is the derivative. Derivative is what? D1 and Dx. What's the meaning of that? Why we are using D in the derivative? Kind of difference. Delta. Difference of Y over difference of X means it's the slope. In terms of the linear equation, it's the slope. Okay. So we try to see the ratio. It's a ratio. In other words, we try to understand the such a curve of the data. Okay, so that is the derivative of y, the regarding to the derivative of x. If you have the vector number of elements, you can use the vector as an input. Then output is a scalar. Okay, so you can get the output of the y. It's a n space, n dimensional space. But this time, x has x to 0, x to 1, x to 2, so on, x to n minus 1. Or the free. Then the, we cannot derivative all together. That doesn't make sense. We try to partial derivative. Okay. What is the change of y regarding to the specific element? So that is a partial derivation. So at the time we can use a different the, uh, notation. So because our data has vector vector form instead of the scalar form, so we can. So you use the partial derivative a lot. So that is the reason. If you have a chance to take the AP calculus, probably the next step is a partial derivation to take in the, uh, the high school or the freshman in college. OK, so let's start from the, this is really important. If you have a chance to teach your kids, explain the why you study the calculus. Surprisingly, not many the math teacher explain about that. Really. So this is the reason why the especially engineering. So we uh, especially the much easier in the engineering math because our the data set, the our number is discrete. So discrete is much easier than continuous data. But it's still the same technique. So we are going to start from the probability. What is the probability? So, I chance, right? Chance is a chance or the yes, chance is a frequency. So I always uh, the at the end of the, especially for the young kids like the middle school, high school. If I have a chance to talk, so I ask them the. You need to uh, do your best, put the effort to success in your life. But uh, that doesn't guarantee that you can success. Even though sometimes you really work hard, you can be fed, but you cannot achieve the success. Like that. <coughs> However, the life is kind of probability. If you do not try, your chance will be lower. Probability will be lower to be success. Some of the people can be successful without effort. It's a rare chance, but it can be doable. But uh, if you want a success in your life, 
you need to put your effort, that means you can increase the, uh, the chance. You can the higher problem, make the higher probability. That is the life. But nowadays, that's true. So our life is a kind of a really probability. Yeah. So probability means it's a chance. Okay? Chance to be win, chance to be certain event. It's a frequency. In other words, uh, when we define the knowledge, what is the knowledge? Is the pattern or frequency? <coughs> if something happens frequently, that is the knowledge. That is what we want from the data analytics. So, they think higher probability, that is our goal. So, if we can find such a hard decide, the, when you decide any problem, so like the select the person for your employee, A and B, higher probability, higher chance. Okay? So that is the probability. Then, we'd like to understand the probability. First, that's not, first, probability space is different from the power number space. Okay? So think about the probability, it can be the starting from the, like the, Dice, toes, and uh, one, two, three. You see number system? No, it's not number. If you mark the, like the animal, it can be kind of animal space. It's not number space. So probability is in the probability space. That consists of the three parts. Any probability space consists of the three parts. You probably learn in your the math class in your high school or the the statistics class, but uh, sometimes to make the student easy to understand, they do not explain them directly. So like the probability space has a this, 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 not like that, but separately explain. So first part is the outcome. So let me use an example of the, so outcome is like the, for example, the dice, rolling dice. How many different the outcome can you get from the rolling dice? One, two, three, four, five, and six. This is the outcome. Okay? So, o omega. Omega is the set of such an outcome. It doesn't have to be number. It can be animal, like the lion and the tiger, like that. So, it's not the number system. So, don't be confused. Okay? A lot of the good. Because of that, uh, sometimes uh, it makes the confused. The student may be confused, so some of the mathematics, the password, they do not actually the differentiate the probab probability space and the number space. Then, next one is the event. Event means, so from the same outcome, there might be different the event. I'd like to calculate the chance to, to be odd number. Odd number is one, third, three, four. This is one possible event. Okay? <coughs> what is? I'd like to get uh, uh, bigger than the, higher than the three. So four, five, six. This is the event. So event is a combination of the outcome. But it's a specific, the event, real event. This is a possible outcome, but combining the such outcome, we can have the event. What we are interesting is event. Okay? Event. Then, what we want to do is a chance. So we need to represent such an event. How much chance we have using probability. So, like the, I'd like to the, uh, uh, get the chance of the Rolling two times, then the, the sum is the higher than seven. Like the, for example, one and six. How many chance? And uh, two and five. How many chance? And three uh, and four. And uh, this chance. And uh, five and two and the six. But this five to this here. So we can uh, calculate the chance using the graph like that. What is called the distribution. So we can the map the chance of event to the 0 to 1. So 1 is maximum chance, 
Zero means lowest chance, nothing. So zero to one metric. That is called a probability distribution. Okay, so probability space has the outcome event and such a distribution. Eventually, we are interested in the event, there, the chance. So this one is what we are the interested. So then, there are axiom of probability. What is axiom? It's always true because can, he, can I prove the axiom? No. Axiom means it's a, we agree. So like the, for example, point. Nobody knows so what is the point. We agree. Point is an invisible thing, but it's a starting of the lane. The lane is a collection of the, such a point like that. We agree without proving. <coughs> okay? we can, it's not arguable. It's a, as it is, it's true. That is an axiom. So actually mathematics starts with uh, such a, as less axiom as possible. Okay? If we have too many axioms, maybe conflict later. So as less. The other can be proved. You can prove that the other or the other. For example, zero time one is uh, zero. Everybody know. Is it axiom or the, it can be proved? Zero times one is a zero. Is it the axiom or it can be proved? Axiom? Actually, it can be proved. You can prove. That was the, my first question in my math major. When I joined the math the <laughs> department freshman first class, my professor assigned that this. Why don't you prove that this one? Even I don't even understand the question. Can I prove? It doesn't make sense, but we can prove. Using what? Action. Okay. So like the identity. What is the identity? So multiplication, identity. Well, identity means when you operate, the, it's the same value. So for the for one. Right? Then the, you can the, apply the commutative rule. Commutative rule is also axiom. So then the, you can prove the this one. Why don't you say the rule do this? So this is axiom. So what is axiom? So always event is equal or bigger than zero. Because zero is uh, nothing, it's the uh, lowest chance. And the maximum is the uh, one. It cannot be higher than one. Okay. Then the complement, there is a complement, disjoint event. If E and E prime is a totally different case, their chance of the event can be, you can, uh, it's the same. The event, complement of the, this one is a totally different case of the probability is each of k, each of probability and add up. So this is also axiom of the probability. <coughs> so just like the discrete and continuous, and so on. Then I already gave the example of the probability space and uh, this is a free coin. It's a typical example you have seen in your the math class, math textbook. So I'm going to skip the, this part. And uh, this is the, uh, the probability space is the distribution. Like the event, for example, the continuous case and uh, uh, selection of the high. So that will form the bad shape, the distribution. Later, we are going to call this kind of distribution as Gaussian distribution. If the mean value is a zero, it will be normal distribution like that. I'm going to skip this part and the random variable. So many students are confused. What is the random variable and what is the probability? So far, we have talked about the probability space with the uh, uh, outcome event and the uh, distribution. But this is not in number system, right? It's not in mathematics. Because of that, some of the people believe the statistic is not mathematics. This is the statistic. So for example, in my, the old school in Korea, we have the statistics major separate. It's out of the mathematics department. So, the math, math professor, they believe the statistic is not the math. It's the, the different one, something like that. So this is a problem of the space. But we cannot compute. 
because it's not the mass. We need to move mass to the transfer to the mass space, number system, number space. Okay. <coughs> At the time, if we transfer the this into the number and mass space, we need to variable, right? So we define. We cannot represent the all different uh, the like the continuous probability. Probability. We cannot represent all each and every case. Instead, using variable. So using that variable for the event, we can make the function create a function, p over x. So then finally, this one is in the number system, mass space. Then right now we can calculate, compute. We can use the computer programming, so on. So that that time such a variable for the event is called a random variable. So think about the, your the statistic or probability in the elementary school is a this. Uh, it's a probable probability space. But uh, later, the when you are using the probability in your the high school or the even the advanced level, that is the uh, the mass space, the number system. So using the random variable. So at that time, it's a function. We are going to use the function to transfer for the event. So this is the case. If x is a zero, zero case, what is the probability? It will be output is the also number. Input is the number, output is the number, it's a function. It's like a function. Very similar as the y equal the f of x. It's a very similar format. Input is the x, and output is the value. Then there are characteristics of the such a the uh, the probability in the using the random variable. So first, what if we have the two events happen together? That's a general. Not always only the tossing the uh, dice. What if? Tossing the dice, same time tossing the coin. How many event for the coin? Two, head and tail. How many event for the dice? Six. How many different cases happen? Twelve. Six by two, right? So we can combine two event together in terms of the random variable. It will be like this. So we can find, the, for example, the probability of the head and then the uh, dice is one. We can find how many? The one over twelve. Okay. What about the head and the even number? Half and half, so we know that it's a quarter. Right? So this is the joint probability. The joint probability constructs two or more random variables. In other words, two or more events. This is very similar as the, the vector. So we use the x, y. C, or the x1, y, x2, x3, something like that. This is called the joint probability. At that time, the, when you calculate the probability, it's the end condition happen together. Okay, so in terms of the, such a distribution, you can understand. Actually, it's not clear, but it's like the, this, the three dimensional space. So this one is the random variable of y, this one is a random variable x. This is a probability. So this one is a probability. At the time, this is the joint probability of the. Oh yes. So it's a x is the model. So sedan, minivan, SUV, sport, and the y the y the random variable is the manufacturer, American or Asian, the European like that. Okay. This time, what is the joint probability? For example, joint probability of it's a minivan and the produced by the European company. The minivan is here, and the European is here, so this one is the 0.1481. It's the joint probability. Okay. It's called the multivariate <coughs> distribution. There are two concepts before we, this one is, you heard about the conditional probability, but before that we need to understand the marginal probability. The so marginal probability is what is the a uh, probability of the uh, the minivan uh, or manufactured by European. Then we can select this. So, it's a baseline is the entire together. What is the probability of this one? 
So that is a marginal probability. However, if we we try to keep the probability of the, this one, but baseline is the, among the mini band. Okay, among the mini band, we have only the mini band. Then what is the probability of the European length fracture? Numerator is not changed, but the denominator is changed. So numerator is the European company, but the baseline, the marginal, the probability is considered everything. But the conditional probability is only for the mini band. So their probability is the change based on this one is one. And the, among the, this mini band, what is the chance of the, this, the uh, European? Okay, this is called the conditional probability. So conditional probability, instead of using comma, we use the R. Right there. So how can I, how do I understand? What is the chance of X in case of the Y? When Y happened, what is the chance of X? This is called conditional probability. We have a lot of such a conditional probability. Okay? So this is a very important. When you understand the conditional probability, definitely you heard about dependent and independent. Right? In case, what is the independent the event? There are two events, they are independent. It doesn't affect each other, which means even though happen together or sequentially happen, they can be calculated separately. But in the dependent means based on the other event, the probability of the event will be changed. So which one is simpler? Independent is simpler. Dependent is very complicated. But in our life, many of the cases, it's a dependent to each other. Because of that, we are going to consider how much related, how much dependent. That is called the correlation. So correlation is one of the important the approach to understand the data. It can be used for data analytics. Like that. So conditional probability. We if we extend the conditional probability, that will be base theorem. So base is the name of philosopher. Actually, Presbyterian the minister. He was the minister at the Presbyterian the church, 17 something, 18th century. It's a 200 something years ago in England. Then uh, he found the uh, such as the rule of the conditional probability. Intuitively, he understand the base rule. Like the, if we have experience, we can guess, actually predict very clearly the chance of a certain event. So that is the idea of the uh, base, and that is the actually based on the 90% based on the conditional probability. We will see what it is later. So marginal probability is uh, the considering all of this, the baseline denominator. But the conditional probability, the denominator is uh, this one. Baseline is uh, this. So it's the chance of the European is uh, among this. So that is conditional probability. What about the continuous? It's the same thing. Continuous and uh, discrete, they are not different. The only difference is whether it's a continuous number or the whole number distinct, uh, discrete number. So in this case, uh, it's also <coughs> same thing. There's the x y to event, and the not to event is x one uh, y variable, and uh, this is a probability. There are three the uh, Gaussian the mixed model. There are three characteristics Gaussian mixed model like that. Ha Gaussian mixed model of the x and y. X and y affect this one. X and y affect this one. X and three models, three characteristics are inside. X and Y, the mixed model. The next one is, uh, so I'm going to go through the, it's a very general concept of probability. So it's not actually statistical course. So that's the reason it's the jump, the little bit, little bit, little bit. But uh, checking the important concept. So the next one is, is fact, I believe that you guys can follow. So expected value. Expected value means uh, like the, think about the, 
uh, Las Vegas. If you go to the Las Vegas, so everybody expect to make the money, right? Is it true? Always the Las Vegas, the, the casino, they set up the expected value is less than, it's a slightly less than the week. It's a, the higher than for the winning chance for the casino is uh, 51 and like that. And the uh, customer is uh, 49. Their expected value is the, actually, the, you can, if you calculate the expected value, always lose the money. Okay? But maybe chance to get. So this is an expected value. So expected value means the for, the, for each event, we try to give the value. So for example, the simple thing is the head and tail. In case of head, I'd like to give the money 50. In case of tail, I'd like to take out the money 50 dollars. Nothing to lose. You can, if you keep playing the, this game, it will be safe, okay? So the, not break the, the uh, but, but what, is, what about the 100 and the mark? 50 and minus 100. Eventually, you will lose the money. You don't play the game. And you should not. Because even though this is a chance of a half, we can multiply minus the weight. This is the weight and plus, and this is the 50 and the half. Then the sum up, if you sum, and then you will get the minus value. So you lose the money. This is the expected value. So expected value is a weighted the probability event. You can give the different weight. So you can calculate the this way, the so probability, and there the value. You can the multiply by the value. Okay, then what is the average? Actually, average is the expected value. But we will give the same weight to the each event, each number. Then that is the, the, the mean of the expected, in terms of expected value. You can calculate the such expected value. You did in your the old the elementary math class, like the, what is the expected value to calculate, like that. Continuous is the same thing. You can do the exactly same thing in the continuous case. But at the time, instead of the sigma, you need to use integral. Okay? So that is the only difference. And the, in terms of the expected value, mean is the most popular expected value. But the, you do better understand the meaning of the mean. It's the kind of, we try to find the center of distribution. <coughs> so that is the most powerful the characteristic, the okay, barometer, to understand the set of data. It's just one value, but uh, using the centroid, you can understand. Okay. What is the, uh, the characteristic of the data? So, how to calculate? We can give this exactly the same value for the event, for each event. So that is the same as the, what you know. The mean is the mu is the sum of the value divided by n. This is the each chance. So if you do, so you can do the, you can do the same mathematical form to calculate the mean and the average. The next one is the variance. The variance means, so once we find the mean, but one, two, three, what is the mean value of the, this data set? It's a two, right? What about the zero, two, uh, four? So mean is just the same thing, two, but the, their characteristics are different from the, this one. Extreme case, minus 100, so like the, let me simplify, minus one, zero, one. So minus 2, 0, 2, so 0, 0. But minus 100, the 100, it's so still 0. But 2 are different. So mean is not enough to understand the entire distribution. How much is spread out is calculate the variance. So variance is the sum of the square <coughs> of difference from the mean. How much is far from the difference? Then square it. Uh, not square, square. So that is the variance. If you square root for this one, standard deviation. Which one is popular? Standard deviation or variance? Variance is popular. Standard deviation 
is not the practical use. Variance is more important because of the nature of that. <coughs> then the next one is covariance. The variance shows the how much far from, how much spread. What time is it? Two minutes. Last one, the covariance. So covariance is when you have the two random variables. Two random variables, how much related, okay? How much distance the, from the each point of view, each the random variable. For example, the, this one is the x, this one is the y. Is the, in terms of y, is the distribute, the, this one in terms of x is the distribute the, this one. Then multiply the sum of the distribution of the x and the dis, distribution of y and the sum of that. That is called the covariance. So, if the two random variables are not related from the this, so data is a distribution of this one. From the x point of view, data is a the distribution. Their distribution is not related. So, covariance is a zero. It's in case if not related. However, this one, as you can see, the even you can easily realize they are related. If x is bigger and y is bigger, like that. And x and y, their covariance, if you see the variance of this and variance of this, they are related. So this one is uh, positively correlated, bigger and bigger. If data is like that, it's uh, negatively related. This one is called, called covariance. So covariance is a uh, very important uh, value. Really last one. Correlation, because it's related. In COBA, the x is uh, the 0 to 10. Y is a 0 to 10. So it makes sense to, to calculate the variance. However, let's say this is a million, and this is a 0 to 10. If you scale the properly, what about the, this one? Almost a linear, right? Their variance will not be considered as the, in terms of the x, right? <coughs> Scale is different. So that may affect the, this one. But the, they are actually related. So how can we address the, such a the problem? Normalize. So we can normalize. How can we normalize? Divide by the variance. Okay? If we normalize by each for the covariance, that's called the Correlation. So correlation is the normalize the covariance. Then the, we can use the correlation to find the relationship between the variable. That's also good solution to analyze the data. So if I I can the, actually observe the, his the uh, age, then his health I can the, guess because health and the age are correlated. And uh, if he let me know that I'm uh, seven years old, then I can uh, assume that right, his hash uh, status. Right? Of course, they are correlated. One of the ways to analyze the data. So at that time, we can use uh, such a correlation. Okay? I'm going to continue the, the other part of the mathematics. So actually, the, this uh, uh, review of the mathematics explains a lot of the, not only the fundamental part, but also the sum <coughs> of the algorithm people uh, used in the uh, data mining. Okay, so what about the students who didn't come? Do you guys finalize something? So why don't you the update on the campus? Then the, uh, I will give the more information about the project that you guys need to do in the next.